Greetings, I'm Rob Chappers. And I'm the captain. Who are you, sir? Aid Hemsley. Yeah! Yes! <coughs> better known as? Well, better in the industry is Orange Aid. Orange Aid. Just seeing if we had some Orange Aid behind the counter here, but uh, alas, not. Orange Aid, because Mr. Adrian Emsley is the historical genius that makes Orange Amps. He does. And yes. why are we here today then, Aid? Uh, we are here to show you the new rocker verb. Yeah. And also <coughs> the Vax Banjita. Banjita! Banjita. And yeah. today is the Question Shot Orange Challenge, whereby every time we ask the wonderful man here a question, we have to take a beautiful shot of Sambuca. Well, we need our medicine, don't we? We need our medicine. Well, we need something. I don't know whether we need... And where are we? Where are we, by the way? We should give these guys a shout. Boiler Oom. We're in the Boiler Room, Guildford's finest music, live music venue, the Boiler Room. I'm behind the bar. First of all, shall we? Um, tell me about the so. What's the potted history of the rocker verb? Well, it was it was kind of orange's high gain amp, really. I, I didn't want to bring orange in a high gain before the actual vintage tone was established. Yeah, you know, which could take a couple of years. Get people used to the crunch tone of an amp, really, before you introduce them to a high gain version. You know, so I held off doing high gain for a few years. You know, until 2003, which is when I designed the rocker verb. See, that's gone through Mark One, Mark Two, and now this is we're just launching the Mark Three, uh, Frankfurt 2015. <laughs> oh. Sh isn't it? Those. Save your love for me, don't say you something. So I have a question for you then, which I have to take oh, a shot. Okay, okay. <laughs> See you on the other side, son. That's horrible. Um, so you're saying that this is really the launch of a more high gain type of amplifier for Orange? <clears throat> no, not really. It's the lead channel is pretty much the same. The whole amp's been overhauled, though. It's been beefed up in a lot of ways with the power switching. Uh, I'm much happier with the construction, so it should be even more reliable than before. Uh, I've done away with any internal connectors, like any multi connectors. There's none of those in the amp now, you know. What's a everything's every, everything's hand soldered. That's a question. Oh, okay. Any, That's anything, a question. anything joining two boards together is hand soldered now. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> you know, <coughs> more pleased with the layout on there. You know, the layout's a lot more. Uh, it, it just works better, you know. Uh, you got the four bias pots internally, so any tech on the planet can match the tubes into the amp. Ask him where it's made, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I will. I want to ask you two questions. <laughs> <laughs> question one: Where is it made? But you can answer this within, within the second question, which is: What do you think the biggest change overall to the, the tone? 
is with this new hub? The clean channel, probably. The clean channel's got more chime, more headroom. Uh, it's, got, it, it's back to the old two knob EQ on the clean channel because it, it seems to just work cleaner, better, you know? And it's more intuitive to use for some reason. Uh, but I've added chime to that channel, so it's it's got more headroom and chime. You know, yeah. that's the big, that's the biggest tonal difference. Uh, also, at the output stage, having the biasing set up the way it is uh, also improves the tone. That's interesting. Uh, well, I, I've used a rockabout for years. Yeah, I've got two of them, I think, in my in my flat somewhere. I've got a lot of stuff in my flat, and the clean on the rockabout fifty. Yeah. For, always for me felt buttery and smooth and kind of warm. Yeah. So you're saying that it's, it's slightly chimier, slightly crisper. It can still do that, but it has more chime and more headroom, which okay. is something that uh, certain players were asking for. Yeah. Oh, the trend set in some of midget sombrero off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> combo we've gone back to mark one mountain in the woodwork you know uh, the combo people will like the look a bit better and uh, 112 it's the 212. 212 we're not doing a 112 version uh, and then we're doing 50 watt head and 100 watt head awesome and are they going to be black and orange it's a yep. question technically but we've run out of shots yeah to pay for another bottle unfortunately but okay anyway well, I'm, just, <laughs> just I'm just gonna pour some more so we're back and we're refreshed space. with, uh, it's with this f***ing massive. It's giant. It's <laughs> There's loads of space out there. We can't put that in, Lee, because you said a swear word. So, well, it just gets bleeped out. No, what we'll do is we'll put this instead. There you go, that's the swear word. <laughs> so um, whenever you swear, it's one of those. So we've refreshed our shot count, which means we've got another three, four, five seconds still count questions for aid. So why call it Rock of Verb 3? Uh, because it is the third <laughs> yeah. incarnation the lamest, of the rock verb. Question. What's your favourite colour? <laughs> So there's another interesting feature on Rockerverb, isn't there, which, uh, tell me about, because I'm fascinated with all the different variants of attenuation that you can have, so tell me about the attenuator that you've put into the Rockerverb 3. Yeah, well it's that got, wasn't even a question, it's was now it? got the foot switchable attenuator, same one as on the dual dark, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's the same, it works the same way. Uh, it's a great feature to add to that amp, because it means people can attenuate, you know, say 20% for rhythm and then defeat that for lead, you yeah. know. That's uh, really, really it, interesting. Is there a big, uh, like a dummy load in there? Or no, no, I don't, I don't like sticking something between the output transformer and the speaker. That's going to mess up the response. Yeah. So it works in a different way to that. You know. Go on, explain for the, the, the physicians out there. Is that right? That's a doctor, it works, it? In the same way, it works in the same way as the dual dark. You know? It determines when the output stage would start to clip. You know? And it's clipping in push-pull still. It's not clipping single-ended like a preamp would and attenuates that way. Nice, nice. Mm. Right, what's, what's the, just for the spec heads out there, give us the sort of the valve compliment and uh, I think that's probably all they really want to know, isn't it? You've got four 12AX7s, uh, you've got two 12AX7s and you've got two or four EL34s. But it can be set up to run on other output tubes because the, the, like the bias pods are all uh, multi-turn. 
and it can be biased for 606s or KT88s or anything you want to put in there, you know. I noticed. Or you could even mix them. You could buy could a slip for two 606s and two 34s. Oh, I've never done that before. You can do that on any of our new 100 watt heads. Yeah, cool. I just want to say thank you very much for making coffee for us. You're very I, I very much appreciate it. And we're just standing. I noticed yeah. it's got notched knobs now. Mm. 21 de tonte controls. De tonte. Yes. De tonte, de tonte. I thought it was a nice touch, it makes them more recallable, you know. Uh, you know, it's easier to recall your settings, especially if you're in the studio or something, you know. And uh, you change your settings for another track and then you want to decide you want to chuck some more guitars on another track that you were doing previously, you know. You can kind of dial that back in pretty easily. Just write down notch 10 or something. And yeah, then... well, you know, you, you can, you, you know, if people, some, I mean, people will often mark their controls on front panels with a marker. Yeah. You know? So it makes that <coughs> a little easier, really. Yeah. Okay. You know. Now, picks only. Have yeah. you introduced any new pictures? I think that's probably the best. Yeah, so there is, there's a global <coughs> icon, right? Uh, which is, uh, it indicates that the attenuator and the reverb are global to the whole lamp. So, you know, they're, they're on both channels. Whichever channel you're switched to, those are, you know, a global to both channels. What's it like being a guy that designs and brings to fruition some of the most iconic British amplifiers in history? It's hard, because I've got to try and keep making stuff that's better. You know? That's a very good answer. That is it, that because that's the dilemma, isn't it? When you, when you look at the Orange Custom Shop, so the OR, Let's just call it the Orange Custom 50, isn't it? Yeah. Which, you know, many people would say is, you know, the premium amplifier sort of in the orange kind of range. <coughs> yeah, and yet that's the most, almost the most simplistic kind of amplifier that you make. So what's, how, how do you approach the idea of... of well, it's vintage flavoured amp, you see. Yeah, because really so guitar one. players are terribly conservative by nature, aren't they? So it, you, if you, are you always in your mind thinking, I've got to retain something that keeps those guys happy whilst introducing new features that are Yeah, I like, I like, I don't like to make an orange amp that can't do early ACDC if dialed in a certain yeah. way, you know. Uh, I always like them to still be able to work like a vintage amp, either if you crank the clean channel or if you crank the volume on the lead channel, bring the gain down to about three or four. You know, I still like to get that bounce that you get from the speakers, you mm. know, that you get on vintage amps when you, you know, that don't have a volume. They just have a, a gain. Mm. Uh, they don't have a, any kind of master volume. So, you know, when that's turned up on this, it's not there. And it's, you just bring the gain in and work it like a vintage amp, you know. Uh, it, it, I don't like doing amps that can't do that. <laughs> So, who were your guitar heroes and who inspired you to bring out these amazing amplifiers? Over the years, I mean, there's loads of like Steve Jones from the Pistols. Oh, really? Uh, there's one Link Ray, is probably my all time favourite just because of the primal. You can make one chord have more cough. Lee doesn't know who Link Ray is. Link Ray is uh, Batman. So now you know. <laughs> the Batman theme. Really? Yeah, that's Link Ray, you know, I mean, Link Ray, Rumble, Ace of Spades, you know, that, you know, he, he can make, he, can, he could hit one chord, he's dead now, and he died a few years ago, age 77, you know. He had one lung, he was half Red Indian, uh, but, he, you know, he, he, he could hit one chord and it, it would have more primal aggression, and, you know, he got banned on, from airplay with an instrumental. Wow. In How 1959. You, know, <laughs> you managed yeah. that. Uh, you, yeah, that, that, this, yeah. It, yeah, listen to some, check out some Link Ray. Wow. You know, uh, 
Yeah, big fan of Link Ray. You like a bit yeah, of Deftones, don't you? A lot of guitar players. Yeah, that guy's cool. I mean, I like a lot of different stuff, you know. But it tends to go back further, really. You know, I, 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 you know uh, I'm a big Faces fan. I love Ronnie Wood. Uh, he's playing, you know, on, in the Faces, you know. Uh, you know, Mark Ford, I think, is a great player. You know, he used to play with Black Crows. He's, he does his own thing now, yeah. you know. Uh, Neil Young, yeah, yeah. you know. Uh, you look a bit Neil Youngish, I think. You know, uh, <clears throat> you know, really for the songs that he wrote, really, you know, I mean, that's the song that he wrote such fantastic songs, you know. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, guitar players, I mean, I love some great country players. I love loved the way some of those Nashville guys play. You know, you go to Nashville, it's kind of like, you know, if you play guitar, it's like, Oh God, I'm going to have to take up golf now. Cause <laughs> yeah. I know what you mean. It, it, it yeah. is like that though. Yeah, it's you like know. the first time we saw Tony Hill. You see some of them people tear up on yeah. the telecaster. It's like, oh my God. Yeah. It's like, whoa. Yeah, I remember the first time I saw Ron yeah. Block or Dan Tominski oh, or all this. And just like, well, I'm just going to go. Yeah. Uh, Danny Gatton. Danny Gatton. Oh, Danny yeah. Gatton. Yeah. Danny Gatton. What, what a fantastic what a player. guitar yeah. player Danny Gatton was. Yeah. Yeah. Are you a Johnny uh, Lang fan? No, yeah, Johnny Lang, because I, I, he's got a tone that is that almost that sort of orangey thing kind of reminds me of you know, it's just like it's just I'm not doing another one um, it, it, it's so fat and dirty and just sort of you know oh, it's a bit like yeah I mean it, there's no it, there's no kind of individual style that I lean towards I don't even feel it I don't yeah it, it either hits you I do remember though that you're very yeah. loud when you test out your gear because I went to the Orange well, workshop you know, at one point and you were cranking a Les Paul. Well, personally, I only I only like to use all my amps at home really are 15 watts because I only really like power amp distortion. Yeah. I don't, yeah. Obviously, I have to design stuff that's got that you can use quiet. But I don't yeah. like to use quiet. <clears throat> you know, yeah. I, I like you know I like more more roll and less rock. Do you know? Uh, yes. Volumes. All the way up, and the gain I just bring in yeah. until yeah, yeah. it's either like you know something off the first three ACDC albums, or never mind the up to never mind. Yeah, it's that's kind of. Uh, Do you think you'll ever put a on the volume control at some point and just kind of bring it definitely to needed. the? Uh, well, you know, I, I, I don't know. You know, we'll see. It's we'll a hypothetical question. You know, I, I was on a holiday see. once in the uh, Caribbean, I don't and, we went, you. and we went to one of these old. Um, plantation houses and they have Still a little believe. museum bits out there and they were showing us uh, some uh, part of the um, like, I don't know like an old smithy or something like that and they had a tool in here like a rusty old tool that was basically like a pair of spoons that was sort of like this with a, with an arm on it like that and uh, I said to the person doing the tour this will become relevant by the way I said what, what did they used to use that for and they said that in the old days you used to walk up behind a cow cup its in this sort of dual spoon thing and just literally big stone just like that and that was how they used to early castrate um, and I did things like you could see every man in the room that you go like that yeah, and yeah. Uh, anyway so yeah we digress well there you go that talk about the <laughs> brought us right back down. yes I have a question actually is the attenuator different from the one that was in the Thunderbird uh, not really a little a little and there's a lot but of it works in a similar way. And are you still using negative feedback? Uh, yes, a little, a little. You know, it's a bit different to the fun of it. Now, but yeah. <laughs> I'm interested in whether you think the amount of sideburn <coughs> affects your guitar tone. I think he's, it's he's more, winning completely. I think though. it's more the amount of one pack you one have. Pack. Oh, one, one pack. pack and, uh, and, uh, and he's sideburn. He's a great rapper. I think the gentleman of a, I, I might got this mate who's the gentleman of a fuller figure. And we'd be playing guitar at home. <laughs> we'd be playing guitar at home. 
and you pass him your guitar, you know, nothing's been touched on the amp or nothing, you know. And he, he'd sit there, he'd play the guitar like this, and he dressed it on his belly, and instantly the tone just became fatter. <laughs> That's great. Without, you know, I mean, obviously he could play, you know, he had good, some good chops, but the tone, just hit one chord and it, just the resonance out, it's like Leslie West has got a great tone, he always yeah. gets a great tone, you plug yeah. him into anything, you give him any guitar, you give it to Leslie West, another great guitar player. You think more Leslie flash West. touching the back uh, of the body makes uh, a difference to resolution? Uh, undoubtedly, I yeah. mean, it, you know, you give it to Leslie West and, it, and, and it's just going to be big. Cause. Holy so, but debate. In all, seri- in all seriousness, though, you, you're a believer that it's a system and that every the, the wood makes a difference. Yeah, the oh, of course the wood. You know, not even the wood between the, the you know between the bridge and the neck. I mean, the wood behind the bridge makes a difference, a massive difference to the tone, the amount of it as well as what it is. And this is something that you've you've sort of studied and s- never found an exception to it. That's interesting. Well, we should go try some. Uh, we should go try some amplifiers, shouldn't we? But then, what, what would you know? I mean, it's not as if you designed what would I know? Class what would I know? All of the biggest yeah. No idea. I don't, I don't no idea. Know. I've never found an exception to it. People can argue, but some people just like to argue, right? That's Especially true. on the internet. We did it today, didn't we? We were playing with some guitars. I got a hot rod out, yeah. and I got a ghost fret out, and he went, "That will sound better because there's more wood, and it's in a better place for this particular amplifier." And he was right. It did sound better. It could have gone 50-50, but I knew which way it was going to go. <laughs> he had the insight. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> do you want to wrap? Uh, I don't want to wrap because I'm not really... Do you want to, yeah, do you want to wrap, do you want to wrap the rock of a video cheese and Give me some mop. Well, I have been Rob Chapman. And I've been the captain. And I've been Aid. And we thank you for watching this wondrous video. Please share, like and subscribe.